Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. We're taking a look at a new tool, not a new tool, but a tool that I use regularly in my work, and that's Google Forms. Frequently when I'm working online, I want to send out uh, a survey or uh, a question and answer session, or I want a way for people to share information with me. Um, so in my classes, this might be a reading log, this might be a sign-up sheet, um, this might be a homework or a quiz, but then also as a researcher, I frequently have data collection where I'll send out a survey online. Um, and there are some great tools that are out there um, that you can use for data collection. Uh, one of the tools I've used in the past is SurveyMonkey. SurveyMonkey is incredible, but also SurveyMonkey can be pretty pricey. Um, and, you know, I use other tools right now in my institution that will do data collection and they're pretty sophisticated but once again they cost a lot of money um, and so if I want to quickly send out a survey to people online or to colleagues it can get pretty pricey and I'm always worried about whether or not my institution will continue to pay that bill or pay that amount um, so one of the tools that I use and I and, and I've used it for numerous years in my research and also in teaching and learning is Google Forms. Google Forms is a part of uh, the Google Apps. Uh, Google Forms to me is one of the best parts of Google Apps. It's one of those parts that I'm surprised that not more people are using Google Forms and thinking about ways that you can use it in your classroom. So once again you can go in and look for Google Forms but I prefer just to go right into Google Drive. I'm signed in through my regular Google account. Uh, once again, if you don't have a Google account, it's pretty easy to go in and sign up for one for free. If you use Gmail or Google Calendar, you already have a Google account. So for Google Forms, what I do is I'll come in, I'll go into New, and it's not right up top because it's not one of the, you know, the more well-known pieces but for me it's an incredible um, so if I go into new I'm gonna go down to more and I'm gonna go to Google Forms and start up a new one now if you have not used uh, survey creation tools or form tools like this in the past um, it can be a little bit convoluted and, and a little bit hard to understand how things operate um, so once again if I'm here I'm gonna click on the title of this and I'll say test quiz so this will be the um, name of this quiz that I'm working on. So a couple different things is, you know, when you're working on a quiz, when you're working on a form, you want to view it as like a project. So you have all of the materials for the project because on the, the quiz, you're going to have the private side of the quiz, all of the information on the back end that makes the quiz or the form do what you want it to do. And then there will be a, a public or participant side to the quiz. So there's two different sides because if someone's taking your quiz or working on your form, you obviously don't want them to see all of the things happening behind the scenes in your quiz. So I name it. It's telling me where I save it, where I want to save it um, to. Once again, this is just like Google Apps and Docs and Slides and Spreadsheets, all of the things that we've talked about in the past. So what I can do is as I get started, I can look at my questions here. I have one question and the title of it. I can add a description so I can call this you know test development I can go in and I can see responses to it I don't have any responses yet because nobody's taken this my first question is here ready for me and then I have this bar over here to add more content so I can add new questions I can add different types of questions I can add a little block of a title over a description let's say I want to have you know a question and then have like a pause where someone can read some extra directions before moving on one of the things that Google Forms has added in in recent years that I love that I've been asking for especially as somebody that studies and researches online multimodal digital content so images and video and stuff like that I love the ability to add an image or a video and have someone stop and look at the image or look at the infographic or the chart or watch a video and then answer questions for the for me that's very important so they added that in so I can add an image I can add video and I can add sections to this so you can have someone start and stop there as they work their way through the quiz if you have a quiz or a test uh, that's uh, a bit longer obviously that's something that you want to have uh, pauses broken up into it so if I click on this I can edit this question here okay so I'm gonna just for 
purposes of demonstration here. I'm going to say this was question one. So this is question one. This is a multiple choice question. If I want to, I can add an image to this question. I'm not going to add images here. I'm going to keep it very simple. So I'm going to say that this is option two and option three. Okay. So we got question one, pretty simple. Do I want this to be a, do I want to duplicate this? Do I want to delete this? Do I don't make this a required item? Um, and then I can move this around to others. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to then add another question and I'm going to call this one question two. Okay. So just so we can see that, you know, how they look different, uh, how they look against one another. So I'm going to say apple, orange, pear. So I have question one, I have question two, same thing here. If I want to rearrange the order, I can just click and drag. So I can grab this one, drag this one in front. Oh, I'm dragging order here. I want to drag this whole one. Come on. So I can rearrange the order of the questions pretty easily. Um, so I can move things around. Uh, I can also change the types of questions. So as I start to develop, one of the things that's helpful for me is sometimes it can be hard to figure out what do certain question types afford like what do they allow you to do so a multiple choice question is going to give me this sort of structure i can go in and i can add another question here so it dropped it in between question one and two and we know how to move it i can change this and i have multiple question types so multiple choice might be good for you if you want to have like an a b c d type of question that you want to ask um, what i will frequently use is short answer or paragraph Typically, I use short answer if I want someone to give me their name or an email address, something simple, um, anything longer than a sentence or a couple words, I go with paragraph. Paragraph, in developing a lot of instruments over time, what I've recognized is that if the answer box is small, you'll typically get short, shorter answers or shorter responses. If the answer box is bigger, um, like a paragraph, you're going to get longer responses. Um, so if you have, want a short answer for a response, if you're asking students a question and you want a couple sentences, I find that it's easier to go with paragraph. Um, short answer just has a small box and it makes people write less. Um, and it, it has been problematic for me in the past with students. If it's anything longer than their name, I make it a paragraph pretty much all the time. Multiple choice is multiple choice. Uh, checks, check boxes is, you know, uh, which one of the ones do you agree with? Then they're going to check all the boxes that go along with it. Pretty simple. Uh, drop down menus, a little bit more sophisticated. File uploads. Let's say at the end you want them to upload a document or upload their assignment or upload their homework for you. Um, I don't use that as much. I have other tools that I use. I use uh, Google Classroom and Google Plus communities and some of my online learning management systems for that, or I just use Google Docs. I have them share links with me. Um, you can have multiple choice grids and, and checkbox grids. I also use a lot of linear scales or Likert scales. So I can say, you know, uh, disagree. And then I could say five is agree. You know, uh, and I can say, you know, do you agree with me with this statement? So I can set up a Likert scale and see what my students think about this. So once again, with all these, I can go in and I can duplicate these. So if you have multiple items that are the same sort of structure or same sort of content, you can duplicate it, you can delete it, you can make them required. What else is hidden over here? A description, I don't really use that that often. So as you get started with this, let's rearrange this so that we can see what it all looks like. So I'm gonna move this one back up to question one question two and then let's add in a youtube video just to see what this thing looks like so i can say apples all right so we have the apple song i'm going to select this and i can say watch this video So now my quiz is pretty simple. I'm asking questions here. They're watching a video. Question two, do you agree with this statement? This is absolutely nonsensical. I'm going to get, obviously, incredible data from this. Um, once you're ready to send this thing out, oh, a couple other things while we're here. So if I want to, I can change the color palette. 
I can add different image, you know, different colors to the top of this thing. It changes some of the colors throughout in a very subtle way. What I can also do is I can add uh, a theme to this. So I can, you know, change the header of this piece. So I can pick this babbling brook and hit select. It's going to load in this theme for me, make it look very fancy. Um, you know, I can go in and I can, if I don't like these other ones, one uh, thing that I do use, uh, some of these other ones, some of these patterns I've used in the past, I like those, okay, as opposed to just the stock color. Um, typically, in my classes, what I'll do is I'll keep the same color theme for the forms and my website and the different materials so students won't get confused as to where they should be. Um, but also, if you want to be a bit more sophisticated with forms, you can upload photos. So you can go into a tool like Canva, you can create an image or a graphic that you want to use as your theme, and you can add that to the top um, across this. I've done a lot of that in the past as well. It makes it look a little bit more polished, a little bit more professional, a little bit more sophisticated, and that's a good thing. Um, what I can also do is I can preview this to see what it looks like. Before I do that, I'm going to look at settings. Do you want it to collect email addresses as people use this? Um, also, I'm using my own Google account. When I use my institutional account, one thing it will let me do is it will let me uh, require that people sign in. So let's say you work for uh, you know K-12 and you have Google Apps for Educators or you're in higher ed and you have you know, Google Apps there. You can have students sign in with their institutional address before they can take it. Um, Sometimes it works really well, sometimes it doesn't. In recent years, what I've done is I just turn that off. I just collect student email addresses so I can see what they've done and when they've done it. Do you want them to only have one response? Once again, this sounds like a good idea, but what I've noticed in the past is that students will go in and sometimes they will get kicked off or some glitch occurs in their computers. Then you have a student back up at your desk or emailing you saying that they had issues and that they can't finish their quiz for whatever reason. So I, I usually turn that off and don't use it. It's not worth the hassle, in my opinion. Uh, one of the reasons is if you're collecting email addresses, you're going to see how many times your student goes in to take the quiz. So if they go in and they're playing games and they're, you know, they're trying to take it multiple times, you're going to see that. Um, and I'll show you where that shows up. Do you want them to go back and edit after they submit? Probably not. It depends on the, the purpose for this. And then after they're done, do you want them to see summary charts and responses? So do you want them to take the quiz or, or respond? Let's say you're trying to pick a common time to meet. Do you want them to go in and take this, you know, respond about what day or time works for them for a meeting and then see what other people have said? You might want that to happen. I do that several times depending on what I want to see here. Do you want them to see a progress bar? So as they're taking the quiz, do you want them to see a bar showing them how far they've moved through the, through the uh, survey? You may or may not. Do you want the question order shuffled? Depends on your purposes. Usually I don't. I have a specific layout or organization to my items. And then do you want them to have a link to other stuff? Uh, well, a link to sort of retake this. Um, it depends on your uses. Do you want a confirmation message? I typically find this is helpful. What The confirmation message, what I also find is helpful is, especially in K-12, what I will do is, in higher ed, I say, great job, thanks for submitting this, now go do other work. K-12, I find it's helpful for you to include a link to other stuff for your students to do. So I'll have a link out to an online game or a search or, or a webinar or internet inquiry project that I have set up for them to do when they're finished with this. So that students that need more time can still work their way through, but the students that are done are not off goofing around somewhere online. So do I want to make this a quiz? This can be useful, especially if you use Google Classroom and other tools. We'll dive into this at a later date. So that's all up under this cog here. I can see general settings for this specific quiz. If I want to see a preview of what I've made, I'm going to click on this little eyeball here. So if I click on that eyeball, that preview, it's going to show me what the quiz looks like. 
it's pretty clean. It looks pretty good. What I can do is I can send this thing out. If I want to come back in and edit, I can click on that pencil and edit the form. So I can see the, you know, what this would look like. So I can say option one, I watch the video, I say orange, I slightly disagree, and I'm going to hit submit. So my response has been recorded, submit another response because I didn't change any of those uh, values. If I come back here to responses, I can see that I have one response so far. This is the one that I just did. Okay, so this is everything that I just added just now. I can see individually, you know, what do I have in there? One of the things that I really love about Google Forms is that it plugs into, and I can turn off and on responses, it plugs into a Google spreadsheet. So if I click on this here, I can create a new spreadsheet, or if I want to, I can add it to an existing one. I'm going to hit create a new spreadsheet and create that. So the awesome thing about this is when people go in and take your quiz, it automatically takes any information from that quiz or any information that people leave in your survey and it adds it to a spreadsheet, a Google Sheet. Okay, we have an earlier video that we put together on Google Sheets. So I have a timestamp. If I wanted this to collect email addresses, I would have a column that automatically gives me the email address as people leave it. But it's basically giving me all of the information that they share with that spreadsheet, with that form. So you can see if a student's in there and they're mul taking this thing multiple times, it will show you that they're taking it multiple times. I can see how much they've, they've finished over time, but I can have a quick spreadsheet where I can see who's doing what on my form and what information they're sharing. Okay, so back here at my quiz, I'm going to go back to the questions. And let's say I send this out and I want to make some edits. I can go back in and edit this thing and it automatically updates it. No issues, no concerns. Now, normally when I send this thing out, one of the last real things I love about forms is when I send this thing out, I have multiple options. So I can send this thing via email. I typically do not send it through email um, to individual participants. What I do is I send it out as a link. So I can copy this link, okay? I can copy that link and include it in my uh, learning management system. I can send it in a blog post. I can send it out via email. Um, so once I have that link, I'm ready to roll out and I can share this form out with people that I want to take my quiz. The other thing that I love about this is that I can embed this thing. That to me is very powerful. So one of the things that I believe is that as an educator, K-12 through higher ed, you need to have your own website. And one of the reasons about, one of the reasons to have your own website is that you can direct all eyeballs of all of your learners to your website. You have your one hub online that you can share information. So by embedding this form in your website, you don't have your learners or participants traipsing around the internet finding your information. OK, because just the very just having students move from Google Drive to this link, there is a click. There is one extra leap where people could get lost in between. Then all of a sudden you have questions about, OK, did it open in a new tab? I'm lost. I don't know where I'm going. For me, it's much easier to have this thing embedded in a website. So you have an embed code that you can basically embed this right in your WordPress site, your Google site. Uh, you can embed this in your uh, Wikispaces page. So anywhere you can, where you want the students to take this quiz, you can embed that content right in the in the website. For me, that's very important um, because I know where my students are and I know when they should be in a certain place and when they should not be there. So it makes it easier to just embed it right in the site and then you don't lose people. So different ways that I've used this in the past, um, I was working with a school district and they wanted to send out a survey to parents. Okay, so they, they had parents starting up and they wanted to see what tech use parents had and they wanted, um, you know, parents to fill this out on the way in. So this was a, something that was sent out to parents before the start of the school year. A quick way to get data about the 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 digital savvy of the parents and of the students before the school year started and the nice thing is that in a very general sense you could collect parents names and emails you you know if you want to 
that's fine. Um, but then also they could very easily sort this out and say, okay, you know, all of our first, second grade teachers, you know, all of our fifth and sixth grade teachers, here's generally the level of technology savvy and comfort that our, our students coming in have. So it might be a very easy way to collect data and share it out with others. Uh, other ways that I've used this, I use this now in a lot of my classes where I'll give my quizzes online. There are other tools that I can do this, but once again, Google Forms works well for me. So what I'll do is I will, let's send this form, let's take a look. This is an older version, I can update this, but... So when I have students taking a quiz in one of my classes, I'll have them sign in. And once again, this is my institutional address. So they have, it's tracking their student numbers and their email addresses. So I'm asking them about language development. I'm asking them about literacy. Once again, this is the difference between short answer and this is the paragraph. Um, it looks different to me. Uh, hopefully it looks different to you right now. And that affects the sort of responses I get. So you can see these are all open open response um, and then all of the answers get pumped into that spreadsheet so I can see when students have responded what they gave me as information and then I can quickly share that spreadsheet out um, with uh, colleagues I can share the spreadsheet out with my GA if the GA is helping me assess this so it's a very easy way to stay on track of quizzes uh, one other one that I wanted to show you is in years past, I've been involved in the Walk My World project. We collected data about participants and used that for research purposes. So we shared out a survey. This has multiple sections, so people can walk through the different sections. So we can find out who is taking this, pro this MOOC that we developed and what they're doing with it. And the nice thing is, after we built this, this is also collaborative. So I can share this with others that I want to help me build this survey so they can go in and review it. Uh, I didn't show a lot of the collaborative piece in here, um, but that is a very powerful tool, just like all the other Google Docs. So what I can do is I can send this thing out and I can basically collect this link or copy paste that link. And now I have a survey that I can send online. So I can link this, I can embed it in my website for Walk My World, but then I can also send a link out through Twitter and through email addresses and say, hey, thanks for joining us in Walk My World. Let us know more about you. You know, tell us what you did, what you shared. Um, you know, I can have different sections. You can see this one has the partic the uh, progression scale on this. And this is an older version of Google Forms that I didn't update yet, but I liked the style of it. I liked how simple it was because it matched up with our website for it. So once again, this is Google Forms. Very powerful tool. I feel like it's um, one of the best tools in Google Forms and one of the, uh, one of the best tools in Google Apps. Um, and it's not used enough. Uh, especially if you're an educator in pre-K up through higher ed, this is something that you should be using all of the time. But I also think that if you're a general creative, if you're constructing content online and you want to get information from people online, it's a really powerful tool that you can send out surveys, send out different uh, instruments so you can collect data and get information from people. Um, once again, it's Google Forms. Hopefully this helps you out. Uh, if this uh, is beneficial for you, please subscribe. Please like the video. Add comments if there's something I missed it. Uh, missed it. <laughs> um, and basically that's it. Thanks a lot.